Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we make demand for our daily bread? You know, the Lord commanded us to do this, and it's always important we obey the Lord. Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we've been talking about teach me to pray. Why is it important to pray? Very, very important to pray. Jesus said, our text scripture, Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. He, he gave a parable, Luke, 1, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. He gave a parable to buttress that fact. That's what the Bible says. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Meaning, if you don't want to faint, you will pray. But let me tell you this. We don't pray by ourselves. That's what I was trying to explain to you yesterday. See, we, we are Christians. Now, when you say you're a Christian, you know, sometimes people argue all sort of funny things. And we are not Christians. The Bible never called us Christians. It is unbelievers that called us Christians. Are you a human being? Yes, I'm a human being. Where did the Bible call you a human being? No, uh, after all, are we animals? So where did the Bible call you a human being? You see? So the classification, why we call ourselves Christians, is not because uh, we are saved. They the, 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 say, oh, how can we be answering a name? How can we be answering any unbelievers gave them? Who told you it was unbelievers that gave them the name? The Bible never said it was unbelievers that gave them the name. It said the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. It didn't tell us how the name came about. What if it was at a point when they were praying in Antioch that they, they came up with that name? Not, not the disciples themselves. The brethren. So you guys are just Christ-like. So whoever coined that name, please understand something. Because that's how we don't think. We just run with a narrative. And, and, you know. Whoever coined that name must have known Christ. And not many people knew about Christ in those days. I hope you know that. So whoever coined that name Christians must have known about Christ. And they must have known about the characters of Jesus. To be able to put it together that these people display the character of Christ. So it's safe to call them Christians. I don't think an enemy of God could have come up with that kind of wisdom. I don't think one who does not have any connection with God would have come up with that kind of knowledge. Looking at people and having a perfect name to describe them. I believe those things can only come from God. You see? So when people start going, we are not Christians. Uh, why why you say you're not Christians? No, me, I'm not a Christian. If I don't even like the name Christian, why? Because there's unbelievers. Like, oh, wait, how? Just how? <sighs> so I was saying something. We, we do not function by ourselves. We function by the Spirit of God. That's why we are called Christians. There is a Christ element in our lives. Okay? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So everyone who calls himself a child of God must be led by the Spirit of God in everything that you do. We do not live by ourselves. So even when we pray, we pray by the Spirit of God. So now if you're praying by the Spirit of God, he, I was sharing with you yesterday how he comes to strengthen us. I mentioned this, but let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Now this was when Jesus was tempted by the devil. The Bible says he was led up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights now verse 10 
Matthew chapter 4. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Verse 11 says, Then the devil liveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Praise God. Even after he was tempted, he defeated the devil in that temptation. The Bible says Satan left him. And when Satan left, guess what? Angels came and ministered to him. Where were the angels when this devil was tempting him? Why didn't they come and knock off his head? There are seasons of temptation that even God will not speak to you. Because see, when God trains you, there are times he leaves you alone and watch what decision you will make. That's the kind of training God gives to us. So sometimes you're praying, you say, God, God say something, oh God say something, and he's quiet. At those times, he's watching to see when the chips are down, what decision will your mind come up with? That's what will show if all the investment that he's been making in you carries any value at all. That's when you will, he will prove you. God proves us. And he proves us in our decision making. Sometimes you're pressed. You turn to the right, turn to the left, no help from anywhere. And you're wondering, God, where are you? This is not fair. Where are you? He's watching you. He's watching. You know what he's watching to see? At the final, when, when, when the chips are down, what are you going to say? What decision are you going to make? You know, I was thinking, because uh, on Monday I spoke to you about um, the, the DeWay's apology. I was thinking about it, right? I mean, because now, now this is how my mind works. I was thinking about it. Like, what that DeWay said truly wasn't wrong. So, let's assume the Holy Ghost told him to apologize. So, why would the Holy Ghost tell him to apologize for what is not wrong? I, I know it wasn't wrong. So why would the Holy Ghost tell him to apologize for what is not wrong? Recently, I did a series of teaching. See, as, as, as servants of the Most High God, God reveals something to you first. And then next, you begin to see it happen around. Okay? So the Spirit of God was teaching me something. And he says, The devil, I call my name Shakaya. The devil that you, you are warring against, he was teaching me, he said, do you understand? Now, when the Lord tells you, do you understand something? Don't say, yes, I think I do. No, I don't. Why? He's not going to be asking me that question if there's nothing in his heart to teach me. So when you now go, yes, I do. Okay, you do? Yes, I do. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I want to learn. So the Lord was teaching me, he said, the devil that you war against. Do you understand it? I said, no. He said, the Bible says, whatsoever, John said it actually, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, right? I said, yeah. And then he said something to me. He said, do you realize that Lucifer was born of God? And then the Lord said something to so me. He said, do you realize Lucifer would never be destroyed? He will never be destroyed because God cannot. I, I use that word with all understanding. I didn't say God will not. Say God cannot destroy him. Why can't God destroy Lucifer? Because he is born of God. But he went rogue. Yes, he's still born of God. So even when he will be thrown into the lake of fire, it's not a destruction. It's the confinement. He's confined to that lake of fire. Have all his authority will be confined to that place. And then I, I began to say to the Lord, Lord, is this not a serious problem? So how do we defeat? How do we defeat him? If he's born of God, like we are born of God. Okay. Now, I know I was asking the Lord that how do because now him sharing this thing with me is because he wants to open me up to a level of understanding and knowledge. And the Lord said something to me. He said, 
The place you will defeat Satan is to do what he can never do. Now, I was say, what can Satan never do? And he said, Jesus said, this one thing I have received from my father. He gave me the power to lay down my life and he gave me the power to take it up again. And this is just last week, the Lord was talking to me about this. So, I said, yeah. He said, that's the only thing Satan can never do. I said, what is it? He, he just quoted to me what Jesus said. So what is it? Satan can never have faith to lay down his life. He can never imagine it. Like, wow. Now, I, I began to think it through scriptures and like, okay, Lord, so how do we do this? And then the Lord began to show me. You see, everyone God have worked with, everyone God have used, they must get to that point where God will command them to lay down, submit themselves. Now, we see that submitting yourself, the power in the statement that Jesus made is not to lay down his life. The power is the ability to lay it down with the assurance that he will take it up again. Okay. So, God walked with Abraham. And promised him a son, Isaac. And Isaac was born. Everybody was happy. God has kept his word. But the same God came to Abraham and said, I want you to take that your son, your only son, and go sacrifice him on one of the mountains of Moriah. Huh? The son you promised me, yes. The son you said in, in, in Isaac shall my seed be, yes. The son you spoke to me that uh, Eliezer, my servant, will not inherit my, my, my stuff. My own son will inherit it. Yes. The son that you said in him, all the families. Yes. I should go and sacrifice him. Yes. Why would God be saying this to me? Why would God be saying this to me? And according to the book of Hebrews, he said, Abraham looked and believes that God is able to raise Isaac from the dead. And that was it. Before Abraham got up to that mountain, he came to that point of assurance. Where he said, if it was to sacrifice this boy, I am willing to sacrifice him. You know why? Because God is able to raise him from the dead dead is the same thing jesus meant he gave me the power to lay down he gave me the power to take it up again so abraham got to say i will lay him down by the power of god by the instruction of god and i will take him up again it's the same thing god was trying to achieve in job when god began to instruct job now many of you don't know it many of you just think that ah job just passed through things no god orchestrated everything that job passed through what was the purpose? God, see, Job had become, now the day Abraham took Isaac to that mountain and was ready to sacrifice him until he heard the voice of God. That was the day Abraham defeated Satan in his life. That was the day, everything Abraham did or received from God. It was that day Abraham put Satan under his feet. And God wanted Job to do the same thing. God, God had blessed Job. Job was a deep man, a man of deep revelation. I hope you know that. Job understood God. He walked with God. He wasn't just a businessman that became rich. And God blessed him. But then God wanted Job to rule over Satan. That would have been a crowning of Job's life. And God spoke to Job. Job. I want you to give out everything you have. Give it to the poor around you. And Job couldn't handle it. God kept looking at Job. said, Job, he couldn't handle it. When Job made that statement, the thing that I fear most have come to me, have befallen me. He wasn't just making it like, I was always afraid I'll be poor. No, no. The thing he was afraid of, that's what made him not to obey God when God was telling him to give out everything he had. He was afraid to do that. 
Now, eventually, God now decided, I know what to do to him. Satan, come here, go to Job. Take everything he has. Okay, sir. And Satan began to deal with Job. What Satan didn't know, that he, Satan, was the target. And when Job, when Job was, when Satan finished dealing with Job, and finally God came and spoke, and God said, Job, I want you to pray for your friends. That act of obeying that instruction was what put Satan under the feet of Job. Because before Job, Job didn't just say, okay, Father, I will obey you now. I pray for my friends. Let them be blessed. No, no, no. God was actually telling Job, despite what you have faced and despite what you are going through now, imagine a man, imagine today a man who used to be a billionaire suddenly drops to zero. Beyond that, he had sores over his body, all his body. To the point that his wife advised him, we just better die. Imagine that kind of situation. And God is now telling him, pray for your friends that are billionaires. How, how do I call them and say, I want to pray for them? Pray that they will become failures like me. You, you wouldn't even want to. Imagine you used to be your place of glory and then God, somehow, you drop so low. Everybody's wondering whatever happened to you. And God is telling you, imagine a preacher, for example. You used to be a preacher and, and you inspire people all over the world, but somehow you just went off radar. And now nobody can find you. Everybody know how, hey, there used to be this preacher, where is he? And, and here you are. You, you don't have any car at all. You're living in a rented house, even a rented as one bedroom apartments in one village like that. And God now tells you, now you used to drive the best cars, you used to, you used to fly with private jets. Imagine, imagine that glory. And now you're confined to one bedroom. And one day God instructs you, go and pray for someone who, who's flying his own private jet now. And God said, go and pray for you. You will look at yourself and say, will he receive my prayer? Won't he wonder whether I want to bring the same poverty that I have experienced into his life? So some of you don't understand that instruction God gave to Job to pray for his friends. It was deep. God was actually telling Job, in all you have faced, now that was the last instruction, in all you have faced now, can you still take on the priestly ministry? and minister as though so with all the sores in his body he still arose and prayed for his friends that was when job defeated satan so i was just meditating on, on, on this and i said to myself like what if god specifically said that now i'm not saying because i really didn't say god told him to apologize this is just me juggling things through my mind okay and learning from it okay that's what i do i love doing that what if god told that i did to okay give a public apology and to see how he will respond to it some people will go i can't uh, if i respond people will believe me again they will not think that i'm confused they will think i don't know what i'm doing ah i will lose member i'll lose. he could have been thinking all those thoughts but the fact that at that point in all his glory he still said you know what hey i apologize because he has faith in god i tell you what that is a place to put the devil under your feet. Lucifer, he can never do that. See, until we rise to do what Satan will never be able to do, we can't defeat him. It's not in the name of Jesus. I defeat you. Listen, there is defeating with his authority. And then there is the... Now, now what God wants from us is that we really, we really defeat the devil. Oh, Jesus, I've defeated him on our behalf. You don't understand. Jesus defeated us to show that he can be defeated. Now you defeat him. We, 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 we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. But you see, there's a point where our life, our character itself. So Jesus and the devil fears us because he looks at us and he remembers Jesus. 
for who we are. He looks at us for who we are. And then he said, this was, they have become like Jesus. Every child of God will be led through these steps. There are many who have failed it. God says, give that thing. Let that thing die from your heart. Ah, no, no. Eh, ah, at all. <laughs> and they struggle and struggle and struggle. I pray your life will be different. I pray you will rise and defeat the devil indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I want to invite you, if you live in Abuja, I want to invite you to join us in fellowship today. Uh, the address of our meeting is on, on the screen by 6 p.m. We meet at 6 to 8 p.m. You will receive sound teaching of God's word. Praise God. And in this season especially, God is doing something unique in our lives and through us. I want us, I want you to join. So I invite you this evening. Don't miss it. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.